calculating and displaying frequency plots. Before we know how to format, format the frequency axis of a plot, let's discuss the Nyquist sampling theorem. So if we have a signal with a period tau, that implies that there's a maximum possible sampling period that we need in order to resolve that signal. And so essentially we need to sample the signal at a period, at a, at a maximum half the period of the signal. So for every period, we need at least two samples is the way that works. Now, instead of sampling period, we can think of this in terms of sampling frequency. The sampling frequency has to be at least two times the maximum frequency content in our signal. So these two are equivalent statements, and we will use that to format our frequency axis. So let's say we have a sampled function a discrete function, we call that f of n, and it's sampled at an interval of delta t. Given delta t, there's a maximum frequency that we're able to resolve. That maximum frequency is 0.5 over delta t, or one over two times delta t. So the sampling period sets a limit on our maximum frequency. Now, the number of samples is really what controls the resolution of our frequency, how closely spaced those points are in frequency. And yes, the sampling period is there too, but for the most part, sampling period controls the maximum frequency we can solve, and number of samples controls the resolution or the step size in frequency that we're able to resolve. I'll mention as a note, it is certainly possible to calculate frequencies that are intermediate to these, but it turns out that's not really giving us more information. So the frequency axis. So if we have an FFT and we know that based on the sampling period that we can only resolve from minus F max up to positive F max, those must be the limits on our frequency axis. Passing through zero, assuming we did an FFT shift to our FFT data. And so that tells us how to format our axis, and that came from the Nyquist sampling theorem. So here's the MATLAB code to do that. First, we'll calculate our maximum frequency as 0.5 over the sampling period. We'll then calculate the frequency resolution, which is one divided by the number of samples times the sampling period. And now finally our frequency axis, we will use the lin space or linear space command in MATLAB, and we will go from minus F max up to positive F max in N steps. Now due to the symmetry here, we probably always wanna make N an odd function. You know, I think we could get away with making this an even function, but we'd have to give this a little bit more consideration where if it's odd, this is an easy thing, that array will have symmetry in it. Given that, here we go. So let's start off with our sampled signal and it's our square wave function. So we have a bunch of zeros, mostly zeros, but ones over some duration of time. So we calculate the DFT using the FFT, or if we're lazy in our language, we calculate the FFT and we come up with something like this. And of course we've scaled it, right? We've divided by the number of samples, but on the horizontal axis is really just the index to the array of our discrete Fourier transform data. So that's not meaningful, at least in terms of we wanna see a frequency plot. So according to the previous slide, we learned how to calculate the frequency axis. And if we generate the same plot, now we actually have physically meaningful frequencies along the horizontal axis. And you can think a little bit about what negative frequencies mean, but the reality is we probably only have to plot positive frequencies. One other trick I'll leave you with here is padding the FFT to sort of plot the discrete time for your transfer. We're not really plotting a continuous function. It's just that we have so many points in it, it looks like a continuous function. So let's say we have our discrete time function here. Again, it's our square wave function with a bunch of zeros and ones in the middle. When we calculate the discrete Fourier transform, we get something like this. Well, what if I wanted to visualize this as a nice continuous line? 
what would that look like? How would I do that? Well, what I need to do is take the same function and just add a whole bunch of zeros to the end. So there's our function, same number of points essentially is here, but we added a whole bunch of zeros afterwards. Now, when we calculate the discrete Fourier transform of this or calculate the FFT, this is what we get. I'm showing it as discrete, but we could plot it as a continuous line. And in fact, these fall within that envelope. Now, I mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. There is not more information here. All of the information we need is over here in the original discrete Fourier transform. All we've done is fill in points in between to make it look smoother and more pleasing to the eye. But all the information we need was in that original plot. So padding does not give us more information. Just like this square wave is what it is. So adding these zeros does not give us more information about this square wave function. It just makes it so our discrete Fourier transform looks a bit like a discrete time Fourier transform if we were to plot this as a continuous line. I hope this was helpful.